Hello, and welcome along to Adobe After Effects Basics with your host, Robert Smith. In this video, we're going to enter what I like to call the Twilight Zone of After Effects, where it gets really a lot of fun, and we can create some wonderful imagery. Okay, to do that, I'm going to start off by starting a new solid, Apple Y like this. 1280 by 720, that's fine. doesn't matter what color it is. Now the rule of um, some effects is if there's nothing to apply an effect to, nothing happens. So we really need to have something to apply an effect to. In this case, if I click on effects and presets, presets over here, the one I want is something called fractal noise. Now that sounds a little bit technical, doesn't it? But there it is, fractal noise. And that is if I type it into my um, database over here. Now to apply that, I'm simply going to grab it and drag it on to the um, solid like that and all of a sudden we have the thing called clouds in Photoshop I don't know if you've ever seen those clouds and wonder what it's all about it's about fractal noise now if I was to play this it's not very exciting is it nothing much is happening okay if you look on the left hand side over here our project window has been replaced by a whole lot of properties associated with this effect called fractal noise now it looks a bit like rocket science and it certainly is quite intimidating if you don't understand what's going on and that's where Adobe After Effects really looks after you it's got this thing called a brainstorm function so let's have a look at that if I click on fractal noise up here and if you go to these little um, icons here you'll see this one here looks a bit like a brain if I click on that it opens up this window and what it's showing you, it's showing you random applications of fractal noise. For example, up here it looks much the same as it did. Here it looks like it's mixed a bit with the uh, solid we applied it to. And same up here. As we drag over it, we get these four little icons like this. So let's have a look. Now, the f how we use this, the first thing we do is up our randomness to 100%. This randomness factor here. And just click on brainstorm and as you can see it gives us a hundred percent random applications of this function called brainstorm some of them are very underwhelming like this one over here for example and subtle I keep clicking till I find one I like I'm a little bit fussy now this is going to give me a great starting point for my fractal noise and what we're creating here is a, a graphic type background so I'm just going to keep going till I find one I like something I can work with as you can see it's just amazing variation with 100% randomness like this okay I might start with this one here I quite like the look of this one here but I'm not a hundred percent happy with it okay I, I sort of like it but I want I want some more variations on that so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and where it says including next brainstorm this fourth this little icon here if I click on that like this and then if I drop my randomness back to about 25% rather than 100% which is quite dramatic at 25% you'll find that they look much the same if I click on brainstorm like this so now they all look they're all based on this one variation and as I click through them like this I find one I like let's say at the moment it's all looking pretty dramatic I might go with just for the sake of this exercise I might go with this one up here let's say I really like the look of this one up here okay now to apply that to our solid or our um, fractal noise effect I simply go over here and click on this little um, icon the tick icon like that and now as you can see our fractal noise has changed into this blue sort of gluggy mess so how do we actually animate that like right now even though it's looking blue and pretty exciting, it's not actually doing much. And that's all to do with this thing called evolution over here. Now, let's not try and understand this. This has got a lot to do with physics and science. And we all were away that day at school, so let's uh, um, I'll try and avoid that. If I Now, how I use it, it's pretty straightforward. It's a bit like the rotation um, property on the timeline. If I click on evolution like that, it'll give me a keyframe here. Notice how I'm putting my keyframes up here as well. And if I go to the end of my 10 second timeline like that, and in this first number in the evolution, I'm going to type in 4 like that. Now let's watch what happens. Ah, now it's starting to get some animation. Look at this. Quite dramatic looking sort of um, yeah, 
Twilight Zone swimming pool type effect, or water if you like. Very nice indeed. Now, the key word here is experiment. Nobody knows where this effect fractal noise will take you, and it, sometimes it takes you to the most amazing places graphically. Okay, so let's, what we've got to do is, let's just play around with this. Let's have a look at it. Let's just go through these things. Now, this is what you do on all effects. Nobody knows what they all do. You just experiment. If I go to fractal type, looks like I've got lots of, okay, I don't like that one very much. How about cloudy? I quite like the cloudy one. How about noise type? Who knows what that means? Soft linear, didn't do much. Spline, oh, made it a little bit blurry, which is, I quite like that. If I invert it, what happens? Not much, looks terrible. What about contrast? What does that do? Oh, I see, that just drags up the contrast up and down. And of course, I can animate any of these things over time because they have little um, stopwatches there. What about brightness? No, I don't want to do that. Okay. What about complexity? What does that do? Uh, makes it more complex or less complex. Okay. As you can see, I don't know what any of these mean. I just play around with them until I get the look I like over here on the right-hand side. And there we go. I quite like that. That's going to make a great background for something, maybe a slideshow or whatever. But that's what we do using this brainstorm function. It's fantastic. So what you do is you apply an effect. Now, it doesn't work on every effect, mainly on the generator effects, and we'll do a couple of more videos. But I really like that look. That's quite a nice look we've generated. And we simply applied the fractal noise effect to a solid and then clicked on this little brainstorm thing here and went through using the brainstorm to tell us what the options are and that's what the brainstorm's all about it's all about giving you options of things you've got no idea about <laughs> it's been my best friend in after effects over the years really gives you a good starting point and then once i've done that and i've used my evolution here to actually start to animate it now i, I wish i knew what that meant i'm not sure it means something um there is a trick to it, of course. You can loop these backgrounds so they loop forever and ever and ever. And the best way to do that would probably be simply, let's have a look at the keyframes involved here. If I just drag that keyframe, the end one to about there, copy this keyframe, and go to the end like that and paste it in. So we have the keyframe at the start and the end are exactly the same. So let's have a look at that. Away it goes. Now, because this is such a gluggy, if I can use a horrible technical term, um, sort of look you probably won't be able to tell when it loops some of them are, are much more obvious than this but as you can see that was relatively seamless and there's a couple of tricks to making it seamless which we'll look at in other videos but as you can see you get this wonderful messy gooey background okay welcome to the world of brainstorming and thanks for watching